Remember the last time you ate a delicious burrito? If that memory is still a bit distant, let me help you. Imagine a rich combination of spices and flavors, a taste of exotic Mexican cuisine made freshly from only real ingredients. Can you picture it? Sounds tempting, right? And now imagine a world where this delicious meal is not only a feast for your senses, but a step towards a better future. This is the world envisioned by Chipotle Mexican Grill, with their vision that food has the power to change the world. Today my team and I will guide you along Chipotle's journey from a small Denver restaurant towards revolutionizing the idea of food, and most importantly, how they can take the next steps on their journey towards changing the world by expanding into a new market. To guide you through this journey, we will have a closer look at Chipotle, evaluate potential expansion opportunities, and determine an entry recommendation. Chipotle has been using its fresh and qualitative Mexican food that you're still imagining, mostly in the American market, where it differentiates itself as fast casual dining from the typical fast food chains. Understanding how the delicious food can now reach more people across the globe, a multiple round evaluation of the world's countries have been conducted and resulted in an in-depth evaluation of India, Australia and Norway, in which, combining multiple factors, India has been identified as the next expansion target for the market-seeking company. An entry mode evaluation and comprehensive risk mitigation, including market and non-market risks, as well as liability of foreigners, revealed a franchise, more specifically a master franchise model, as the most promising opportunity to service customers in Mumbai, very soon the delicious burrito that we are still having in our minds. So let us have a look at what makes Chipotle so special. This food that we are still having in our mind is served for 3,200 restaurants inside and in their Chipotle range, which are their drive throughs through digital ordering and delivering using their own and third-party channels. The company started in 1993 when Steve Ellis opened the first restaurant in Denver and continued your path of growth, ownership by McDonald's, IPO, and a food scandal, and now continuous growth. Taking a bit further, what makes Chipotle so special and so mouthwatering is the combination of using only fresh, mostly locally sourced and real, so no antibiotics, no artificial flavors, ingredients. These are combined with flavors and spices to represent authentic Mexican Texas style food, which even the Mexicans appreciate. Allowing for maximum personalization, tapping into new dietary requir requirements and trends, Chipotle offers a fully customizable menu, which pays out. 75% of their customers are satisfied with their offer. But how does this food reach the customer? Their restaurants, but uh, they're planning to scale up massively throughout the next three years, offer more qualitative dining experience through, for example, upscale interiors and digital capabilities. These digital capabilities start from their first supplier in the supply chain until their own and third-party di digital delivery channels up to their after-sales feedback. Offering their own loyalty program, including point collection and rewards, has helped them to serve 79% of, of their customers not only once, but recurrently. But let's take a step back. How is this delicious burrito even coming to the restaurants? Well, understanding how Chipotle creates their value starts with the supply chain. Close connections to local suppliers, including investments and incentives for them to deliver only qualitative food, is aligned with their qualitative sourcing standards and certifications. Their advanced and increasingly digitalized distribution system allows products to reach the stores quickly and freshly. These efficient processes continue in the restaurant, where a combination of advanced technologies and well-trained and supported employees prepare the food. For Chipotle, the value chain, however, continues. With their innovative thinking practices and initiatives, they prepare Chipotle for a sustainable future that has the power to change the world. This creation and delivery of value, their meals, pays out well for them. The company looks at a substantial track record of more than 15 years of net profits that are continuously, despite the COVID crisis, growing. Changes within the revenue structure can be seen through the introduction of digital delivery channels. So these financial resources complete the picture of the company's business model and see how Chipotle can successfully currently create, deliver and capture on the delicious meals with their key strengths distributed throughout their whole business model. But Tamash, can you elaborate more on how Chipotle can actually transfer this into the world? Yes, of course. Thank you, Hannah. So, the company possesses multiple sources of competitive advantage. Based on the RIO analysis, we have identified six from these that are transferable and thus can be leveraged for global expansion. These include financial resources, recipes and formulas, qualitative sourcing standards, digital processes, customization opportunities, and innovative capabilities. As of today, 
Chipotle is operating in five countries on two continents around the world with over 3,100 restaurants. Its first expansion target was Canada and then Europe after achieving success in the home market. Now it has set eyes on the Middle East and plans to move into the UAE and Kuwait next year through a franchise partnership with Al Shaya. In its global expansion efforts, Chipotle uses a combination of adaptation and aggregation. It applies adaptation in order to align with specific regional preferences and behaviors, but simultaneously it tries to implement aggregation strategies to maintain a consistent standard and a unified global image across its locations. Regarding products, the offering is adjusted based on the cost and availability of local ingredients, but the uniform menu is kept, remaining true to Chipotle's authentic Mexican cuisine. Pricing varies based on local ingredient expenses, but online sales channels are implemented uniformly across international locations. In terms of operations, while Chipotle needs to comply with local regulations and maintain food, food safety and quality standards, it aims to heavily standardize its operational activities via consistent cooking methods, service procedures, hygiene and safety protocols, and comparable branding elements. On the supply chain side, however, building on their experience from the US, it capitalizes more on adaptation due to reliance on local partners for fresh and sustainable sources. These, of course, need to uphold the global quality and responsibility requirements of Chipotle. Lastly, marketing activities are balanced, adopting localization strategies for specific region-specific advertising, but leveraging the reputation and presence of a global brand and a global standard message, food with integrity. Chipotle operates in the fast casual segment of the fast food industry, which combines elements of fast and casual dining, providing quick service with high quality experience. It is an almost $3,040 billion market with 10.4% expected CAGR. So the segment is growing rapidly, especially in Asia, but companies need to take several trends into account, such as demand for healthier food options, technology adoption, need for establishing customer loyalty and providing an attractive experience besides the food itself. Within the industry, Chipotle serves the niche segment of providing high quality Mexican food quickly in an informal setting. These qualities set it apart from global fast food brands such as McDonald's or Subway. Also, it tries to differentiate itself by being exceptionally ethical in its sourcing procedures and focusing greatly on customer experience. As we can see, there are only a few close competitors of Chipotle that operate on a global scale. This makes a great opportunity to expand further. However, competition is fierce in locations where these companies are actually present since they perform well on various key factors for Mexican fast casual restaurants. To deal with the competition, Chipotle desires to grow further by expanding into new or underserved markets. This market-seeking FDI motivation is threatened by growing competition, potential new entrants, rising ingredient costs, food safety issues and health and well-being concerns regarding processed food. However, it can leverage shifting trends by providing healthier options, exploiting fluid delivery, adopting advanced technologies, taking advantage of the driving business model and, as mentioned, expanding to multiple underserved locations. But Gautje, where can the company actually expand next into? After having identified and understood the factors that make Chipotle a successful company, let's spice things up by evaluating and deciding which lucky country will be the perfect fit to welcome Chipotle. To begin with, we will narrow down um, the list of countries to 15, 10 to 3, and delve into an examination of these final nations. In the initial phase, our filter considered market size, growth, and catch distance, leading to the 15 countries on the left side. China and India dominate in terms of market size. India also stands out for its strong preference for Mexican cuisine, but lags behind Scandinavian countries in this aspect. When considering the long-term GDP growth, India once again shines and looking at the cage distance, Mexico and Canada are in close proximity to the United States. In the second phase, our filter consider consumer insights, competitiveness, institutional factors and resource availability. When it comes to consumer insights, demographics favor emerging markets while developed countries have higher urbanization rates. Moving on, 
India and the Scandinavian countries show promise with few potential competitors for Chipotle. However, when considering institutional factors, European countries and Singapore take the lead. This same country also stand out for the logistic performance. However, they are not uh, well known for producing the fresh ingredients that are crucial for Chipotle, unlike, for instance, India or Australia. In the end, among the Scandinavian countries, Norway emerged as the most welcoming host for Chipotle. Australia um, secure a spot in the top three and India also stand out. In the last phase, we will undertake a more detailed examination of each of the three countries. The current slide provides a concise overview of multiple criteria. India emerged prominently in terms of population, GDP, CAGR, and the anticipated sales potential for Chipotle. However, in the domain of FDI per GDP and inflation rates, Australia and Norway assert respectively their advantages, presenting a nuanced perspective on the comparative strength of these nations. The first country under our analytical microscope is India. Utilizing the case framework, we have discerned that India holds cultural favorability, especially in terms of culinary preferences. Economically, it's a green signal too, given the growing middle class with increasing purchasing power. However, the, on the administrative, there are a challenge. Navigating the complex licensing procedures and aligning with the Food Safety and Standard Authority of India for compliance. Geographically, it's a bit of a puzzle. The logical complexities and challenges in the ingredient sourcing, coupled with the considerable geographical distance, can potentially have a negative impact on product um, quality. In terms of the attractiveness of the Indian market, its major strengths are closely tied to its market size driven by a large population. Moreover, the fast casual sector, in terms of restaurants in particular, demonstrate a remarkable growth of 12.3% between 2021 and 2026. It's also important to note that the urbanization rate is increasing. On the customer front, the potential doubling of the middle class population by 2030, coupled with increased purchasing power, offer a promising opportunities for Chipotle, particularly among the younger demographic. To penetrate this market effectively, Chipotle should strategically set pricing, optimize supply chain performance, and tailor menus to align with customer preferences. This slide evaluates the competitiveness in the Indian market and the appeal of the fast casual sector, and Chipotle stand to benefit significantly due to the limited competitive option for Indian in Mexican cuisine, with Taco Bell as the only global competitor. But there are also other factors to take into consideration, like the moderate bargaining power of suppliers for certain ingredients, also while a moderate level of capital is required to enter this market, it remains highly attractive for other brands and the customer loyalty is low in this sector. Furthermore, various alternatives, including the popular trend of home cooking, serve as a substitute in this market. Now, Erasmo will explain you more about Norway and Australia. Switching to Norway, we can say that the cultural distance is low because there is a strong preference for Mexican food thanks to the Taco Friday ritual. The administrative distance is low too, as Norway is ranked ninth in the world for ease of doing business, but this also implies compliance with high requiring food safety standards. The logistic performance index is very similar to the US. And instead, in terms of economic distance, it's an attractive country because the tax rate is relatively low and the income distribution is high. 
The population of the Norway is made up of 5.4 million people with high GDP per capita and low income inequality, implying a high share of income uh, to be spent on dining. The urbanization rate is at 86% and makes it attractive, as well as the popularity of dining out and in general of fresh food, including in the Norwegian diet. The main challenges in Norway are high labor costs and high food prices for ingredient sourcing, on top of an unfavorable weather, of course, uh, which is impacting heavily the agricultural sector. In terms of competitors for Chipotle in Norway, we have Los Tacos and El Camino, uh, which have 20 restaurants in total. Given the size of the market, it may be relatively saturated, uh, but the popularity of Mexican food could still allow uh, a profitable investment for Chipotle. Consumer preferences are shifting towards healthier diets, uh, something that Chipotle must consider when designing country-specific products and menus. But at the same time, we have to say that the high purchasing power of customers could favor full-service restaurants over fast casual dining ones. Finally, with Australia, uh, we have to say that the cultural distance to the US is very low, uh, as food preferences are in favor of Mexican food, uh, although also here consumers are moving towards healthier diets. Administrative distance is relatively low again, uh, you have to comply with the food standards codes, and the ease of doing business is exactly the same as Norway, because they're both ranked uh, 19 worldwide in terms of logistic performance index. However, in terms of economic distance, we have a high level of income inequality, which is very similar to the US and to India in that sense, and a 30% corporate tax rate, which poses economic considerations. The population of Australia is 26.5 million, uh, with 40% concentrated in only two cities, Sydney and Melbourne. GDP per capita is among the world's highest, and the agricultural sector is strong and can sustain on its own Chipotle's demand without the need for imports. Australian consumers are very similar to Americans, enjoying a range of cuisines, including Mexican food, even with a petition in 2018 which endorsed uh, Chipotle's entry into Australia. In terms of competitive landscape, uh, with Zambrero, Ismani, Gomez and Manmex, Australia is a very saturated market for Saudi and the Chipotle's segment. The number of options available to customers uh, makes it very easy to switch, uh, meaning that Chipotle will have to heavily invest to differentiate itself. Australian consumers, however, seem to be strongly attached to fast food and fast casual dining restaurants, even in the face of rising cost of living. In conclusion, we can say that all countries have a positive attitude towards non-Mexican food. In terms of administrative and cultural distances, Australia and Norway are very similar to the US. Economic distance is high for Norway and similar for India and Australia. In terms of competitors, Norway and especially Australia represent highly saturated markets. While instead in India there is only a few competitors. And also the Indian market side is enormous in terms of population uh, and in terms of growing middle class, which is the main target segment for Chipotle. Conversely, Norway has only 5 million people and Australia has 26. The bottom, line, the bottom line is that despite the regulatory and supply chain challenges that India poses compared to the other two countries, the enormous Indian market size and the extremely favorable competitive landscape compared to the saturated markets of Australia and Norway make India the most attractive country among the three uh, for Chipotle, providing it with a strong opportunity to expand following its market-seeking approach. Thank you, Rasmo. Uh, now that we have seen India is a very promising market for Chipotle, now the big question would be how can Chipotle tackle the complexities in India to reach its full potential in the market? Now let's take a closer look at the various paths Chipotle can take to enter the Indian market and consider their pros and cons. Licensing. Licensing offers lower risk and investment along with quick market entry. However, it entails limited operational control and growth constraints. For franchising, uh, it presents advantages such as reduced risk and investment, tapping into local expertise and swift market entry, yet it involves a trade-off that is diminished operational control and excessive reliance, reliance on franchisees. Moving on to joint ventures, we find that similar benefits with lower risk and market knowledge access leading to a quick market entry. However, this route might come with higher legal costs, posing a potential challenge. For greenfield establishment and company acquisition, they often allure the they often allure, allure of significant control and profit potential, 
yet these options demand substantial initial investments and can pose integration hurdles in the future. Now that we have weighed the pros and cons of each method, let's find the best way for Chipotle to tackle the challenges in India. Franchising looks like the smart choice given the country's uncertain market and an indifferent culture. It's safer and gives moderate returns as shown in our risk return chart. Plus, excelling in franchising could bring in even more profits as we have seen. To sum up, lots of big brands like McDonald's and Domino's are using franchisee in India. Chipotle also uses a similar approach in UAE and Kuwait. This shows that franchising could really help us handle the unique challenges of the Indian market. Now, as we dive into refining Chipotle's internationalization strategy for India, the key suggestion would be to elevate its adaptation within our existing approach. This entails a significant adjustment to cater to the Indian tastes and preferences. Adapting our sales approach to fit how Indian customers prefer to shop is very crucial. Equally important will be maintaining consistent high quality standards across all Chipotle outlets in India. Our strategy hinges on product and price adaptation, coupled with aggregation and operations and efficiency in supply chain management. For product adaptation, our menu will reflect the local palette, which emphasizes vegetarian options and picture this like paneer burritos, spice barbecue vegetable bowls and salsas inspired by local flavors. For pricing strategy, we will be ensuring our competitiveness by aligning our prices with market competitors, uh, which will be uh, 35 to 40 percent redu uh, reduction compared to the, our U.S. counterparts. For operations, franchisee operations will ensure compliance with the local food safety standards. This will maintain consistent quality and service, reflecting uniform hygiene and safety protocols. Our interior decor and branding elements will remain comparable across all locations. Our supply chain will also prioritize sourcing of local ingredients uh, for, from local stores for freshness and efficiency. Partnerships with local groceries will facilitate this distribution system. Now, in our strategy, strategic partnerships are very integral for Chipotle's success. For master franchisee partner, we'll be partnering with Hardcastle's Restaurants, who has a portfolio of managing over 300 McDonald's restaurants in Western and Southern India, and their extensive regional experience will help us navigate within the Indian market. For legal advisors, we'll be partnering with Shardul Amarchand, Mangaldas and Company, who are renowned for their counsel to major MNCs and Indian corporate giants. They'll guide us through the legal complexities in the market. For delivery partners, we'll be partnering with Zomato and Swiggy, who are pretty much the Uber Eats and delivery of Deliveroo of India. For marketing exposure, we'll be collaborating with DD Mudra, who is a top tier advertising agency celebrated for their work with global brands such as McDonald's, Samsung, and Nestle. Ultimately, these partnerships serve as the bedrock of our strategy, offering expertise in operations, legal guidance, extensive delivery networks, and impactful marketing. They are extremely essential in establishing a foundation for Chipotle's successful entry into the Indian market. Over to you, Juliana. Thank you, Sanika. Considering all these partnerships, undeniably the most important one is the master franchise Westlife. Let's understand this agreement to ensure shared responsibilities and successful long-term operation. Chipotle will provide standardized but adaptive recipes and formulas to ensure consistency and quality, as well as system maintenance, detailed operational manuals, and marketing guidelines for strategies adapted to the Indian market. In return, Westlife will offer regulatory support by ensuring that all operations are in compliance with local laws and regulations specifically regarding food safety and business practices. Also, part of the profits and support with initial investments committing to the highest reporting and transparency standards to allow for Chipotle to have insights and a certain level of monitoring control. This level of monitoring is desirable, as Chipotle will not be involved in operational parts. These, as seen here, are organized between Westlife and the individual franchisees. Westlife provides help in setting up the business and ensure that restaurants can smoothly operate, while the day-to-day -day operations are run by the franchisee sharing their profits with them. To ensure some direct influence and give the operation that Chipotle is following, 
Training will be provided in collaboration with Westlife. This connection can be used the other way around to require the restaurants to comply to report and represent the restaurant more effectively. Now, let's talk about the potential risk of operating in India and their mitigation strategies. To start, we have the risk of partners not being able to uphold Chipotle quality standards. These can be controlled via the franchise contract, which, as mentioned before, allows the company to have monitoring capabilities. Then, we have the risk of local customers not being receptive enough to Chipotle's products and flavors. For these, we are adapting our menu to local preferences. The risk of inadequate return on investment is tackled with our franchise agreement, as it minimizes our investment needed and incentivizes our partners to excel. Finally, the risk of unreliability of partners can be mitigated by establishing trust-based relationships. So, overall, potential risk arising from both the partnerships as well as the need for local market knowledge can be tackled at the same time through the right franchise agreements. This is also why building local trusted connections is key to mitigate the risk of the Indian non-market environment. In this case, our first issue is the lack of commitment to rule of law in general, but specifically regarding unclear franchise legislations. As this is a country-based issue, we aim to partner with selected local franchise lawyers to utilize their know-how while also incorporating additional timing in every plan to prepare for potential delays. We also have food safety and regulation startup issues as they are widely different than in the US. Practices need to be adjusted. We aim to do this by ensuring regular monitoring of both Westlife and Chipotle, demanding the right to check facilities to ensure compliance with health standards. Finally, the issue of policy changes caused by political instability. To tackle this, we rely on our master franchise model. We ensure a strong local partner that takes responsibilities and also has influence for binding power. This, with our plan to engage in government relations for our own position in the network, should mitigate this. But to actually achieve this, we, let's just have a brief look at how Chipotle can implement this strategy. Within phase one, the fundament needs to be laid, which includes mostly building connections to our legal partner, negotiating the Westlife contract, and building networks with governments. Starting to prepare our operations in terms of menus, supply chains, and manual is followed by initializing the marketing strategy. To specifically prepare for the entrance, the second stage and onwards will incorporate continuous network building. Franchisees and supply chain partners will be selected and ownership technologies and capabilities transferred. Training the employees as well as developing and integrating monitoring from the beginning is key. With a marketing campaign introducing the launch, the first ship of the story in Mumbai will open the second quarter 2025, allowing for enough time to prepare sufficiently. After an initial feedback phase in which offerings will be shaped and adapted based on consumer feedback, Chipotle will roll out quickly throughout Mumbai, Delhi, and Bangalore to bring their delicious meals to Indians in these cities, which have been selected using multiple criteria. In summary, Delhi as the most populous and young city, Mumbai as the cosmopolitan financial and entertainment hub, and Bangalore as the tech-savvy, young and comparatively wealthy city have the highest potential for successful expansion. Starting the first three locations centrally are on Central Station, Airport, and major shopping areas. We truly believe that with this plan in hand, Chipotle can manage to tap into a market with endless potential and further strengthen its position as a global leader in the Mexican fast casual sector. Thank you for your attention.